okay the next algorithm that we are going to discuss is about uh, the least laxity first scheduling algorithm this algorithm is uh, also a preemptive one um, and uh, the other name for least laxity first algorithm that is LLF is can, can also be called as uh, least slack time algorithm so here we will be considering the deadline of each and every process and in, in uh, addition to that deadline we will be uh, calculating uh, through the period and the time remaining time that is left over for each and every schedule will be calculating the uh, slack time and uh, based upon the least slack time that every process has and uh, that the priority of the process is assigned and uh, with that we will be considering the uh, process for execution so this is how we will uh, calculate uh, the least uh, the last the slack time of each and every process and we'll find out uh, which process has the uh, least lag slack time so the d represents the uh, deadline and uh, C represents the uh, capacity that is given in your uh, uh, problem itself so first we will be finding out what is D and what is C uh, from the problem and we will uh, find out the difference between these two with respect to the time T okay so first let us uh, through example if we uh, um, go through the process it will be easier for us so this is the same example I have taken uh, the same as that of the rate monotonic algorithm so I have taken the process execution time and the time period so three process p1 p2 p3 are there and uh, the execution time and the time period is present here uh, so as uh, you know we have uh, plotted that in the line graph so the first uh, process p1 is plotted in from 0 to 20 with 3 seconds execution time and uh, process P2 with the five intervals of time for every fifth interval we have plotted from 0 to 20 and each uh, interval it will take two milliseconds of time and from P3 that is at uh, every tenth interval it will take two seconds of time so like that we have plotted the line graph now uh, let's uh, now find out how we can um, decode this uh, based upon the deadline okay so we shall uh, um, discuss that algorithm with respect to this uh, process uh, uh, p1 p2 p3 with the same uh, example that is capacity is given us 3 2 and 2 and the period is given us 25 and 10 so the deadline for each and every process it is also mentioned here this is an extra criteria that we haven't seen uh, in the rate monotonic algorithm that is 7 4 and 8 so as usual we are finding out the total scheduling time by calculating the LC and we have found out the time as 20 and uh, as I have mentioned earlier we will be calculating the slack time by using this formula one is the de deadline and then the time taken for its execution that is the current time that is a uh, remaining uh, remaining uh, for execution and next is the capacity okay so with this for each and every step we will be calculating this uh, slack time and we will find out which process is having the least slack time so first at the first iteration let us first consider the deadline of each and every process that is 7 4 and 8 so at first t's uh, value will be 0 therefore we are getting 7 minus 0 minus the capacity of p1 which is 3 so we will be getting the slack time as 4 and now the next uh, slack time of p2 4 minus the t is 0 here because at time t it is only all the values will be 0 because we are going to calculate the slack time at time 0 so there will be no uh, delay therefore t is 0 here so 4 minus 0 minus 2 the capacity 2 of process uh, p2 is therefore we are getting the value as 2 and uh, for the third process 8 the deadline is 8 so 8 minus 0 minus the capacity 2 we will be getting the value as 6 so now consider 4 2 and 6 so this is the um, the time that slack time that we have calculated for all the three process and we have found out that the process p2 is having the least slack time therefore we are allocating the processor with the process p2 right so already the capacity is time is 2 therefore we are uh, we have uh, allocated CPU for one second uh, with P2 therefore we are getting the remaining time as 1 okay so this is how we want to calculate this uh, slack time and we will uh, give the priority of each and every process we will substitute the priority of each and every process now for the second iteration now one time we have executed right for one second we have executed the process P2 so the remaining time that is left here is 1 here 
okay so now we are calculating the same by using the slack t uh, slack time formula we are calculating the same again with t is equal to 1 and we are finding that again the slack time of process p2 is very least okay so now the remaining time 1 has become 0 now so now p2 has completed its execution at the first rate that is at time at the first interval that is from 0 to 5 it has completely finished its execution okay so now the process p1 and p3 is alone left in the ready queue right now coming to the third iteration in third iteration we'll be considering only p1 and p3 as we have discussed so now the number of execution time that is uh, uh, done already is 2 because for 2 seconds we have uh, executed p p2 again and again that is from 0 to 1 and from 1 to 2 therefore 7 minus 2 minus the capacity of p1 that is 3 so we are getting 2 here and again 8 minus 2 minus 2 that is 8 is the deadline of p3 and uh, 8 minus the 2 process uh, the time left for uh, execution is 2 and then the 2 is the capacity so 8 minus 2 minus 2 it will be giving 4 so 2 and 4 the least one among this is between these two process is p1 so p1 and p3 both are having the same um, uh, capacity because p2 and p3 both are having p1 and p3 because one unit it has finished its execution p1 has finished its execution now so from 3 it has become 2 now so both of the process are having uh, 2 units of time as a capacity so now p1 is given and from 2 to 3 p1 will be executing similarly at the fourth iteration again we are taking now the time already uh, executed time is 3 so 7 minus 3 minus 2 will give 2 and 8 minus 3 minus 2 will give us 3 and the least one among these two is also p1 again we are giving p1 the chance similarly for the next case also we are uh, taking 4 here as t is equal to 4 and we are finding 2 and 2 see listen here 2 and 2 both are having the same slack time so at that time we will be getting a tie between p1 and p3 so we need to break this tie by uh, uh, considering the currently executing process in the uh, processor so the currently executing process is p1 so p1 should be continued from 4 to 5 itself ok so starting from 2 to 5 p1 is continuing its execution so that the capacity 3 has been completed for p1 and it can be completely taken out of the cpu uh, because it has completed its execution ok so now at time 5 again we need to uh, consider p2 and p3 because first 5 interval of time has been completed by this ok so at time 5 I need to consider p2 also now so p2 and p3 comes into existence so p2's uh, deadline is 4 so 4 minus now a fresh slot for p2 has been started from 5 to 10 so from 4 minus the time left is 0 this is a fresh slot for p2 therefore 0 minus the capacity that is 2 therefore we are getting the time period as 2 right so next comes the p3 that is 8 so why we are putting here 5 in the sense this is not a fresh slot for p3 p3 is already in the slot 0 to 10 so we need to calculate the remaining time that is left that is the already executed time must be calculated so till now up to 0 to 5 we have made executions of p2 and p1 so we are mentioning 5 here so 8 minus 5 minus 2 it will give 1 so th between these two processes p2 and p3 p3 is having the least uh, lax time that is slack time therefore we are allocating p3 to the processor from 6 to 5 to 6 okay so now again one one uh, unit of uh, time execution has been completed now therefore for the next iteration 4 minus 1 minus 2 that is the capacity of p2 it is taken into uh, consideration and for the next 8 minus now the um, remaining time that is uh, the already executed time if we calculate it is 6 for the process p3 so 8 minus 6 because see here from 0 to 1 1 to 2 3 to 4 4 to 5 5 to 6 and six to, uh, f f up to 6 uh, the process completion the process execution has happened okay so 8 minus 6 minus 1 it is giving us 1 so again we are getting these uh, there is a tie and now p3 is already being executed so definitely we will give p3 again to the processor okay so the two units of time for p3 has now finished its execution that is for the first 0 to 10 um, interval the p3 process has finished its execution now the remaining that is left process is p2 so p2 is having 
two units that is P2 and P2 two units of time so we are uh, giving the processor P2 because that is a only left processor process so we are giving from 7 to 9 we are giving P2 itself and then if we see there will be no process waiting in the ready queue for its execution therefore from 9 to 10 we have put the time as idle time because at this time there will be no process present in the ready queue for its execution okay so now after 10th interval that is uh, after 10th uh, millisecond again we will be taking then for p2 we will be taking the next 5 interval that is from 10 to 15 and for p3 we will be considering the next 10th interval that is from 10 to 20 okay so starting with uh, the next iteration we will be we are now starting a fresh uh, slot for both p2 and p3 so that the t's uh, value will be again 0 and 0 so 4 minus 0 minus 2 will give me 2 and 8 minus 0 minus 2 will be gi give me 6 okay so now when we ca consider these two process the minimum slack time is for p2 therefore we are allocating uh, processor with p2 and uh, when we calculate again it will the time t will become 1 now because it is a fresh slot now it will become 1 for both the process p2 and p3 so now by calculating we will be getting p2 only so p2 will again be given the processor so p2 has finished its two units of time of execution and now the remaining process is only p3 and that is also having two units of time and therefore p3 and p3 will be executing up to 14 so with 14 all the processes will be executed uh, one and the uh, final it will be uh, preempted and uh, it finishes its execution it actually it is not preempted it finishes completely it finishes all the processes finishes its execution and it comes out of the CPU so this is how by using the de deadline we are finding out the um, slack time of each and every process and the process which is having the minimum slack time it will be taken to the execution of the CPU and uh, the other processes will be waiting in the ready queue and also we need to keep track of the slot that we are allocating because for P2 every fifth slot should be taken into consideration and for P3 every tenth slot we need to take into consideration okay so with that only we can decide this T value okay so this is how the least laxity first scheduling algorithm it uh, works and it uh, differs from rate monotonic scheduling algorithm thank you